What's up everybody? This is Ben. Thank you so much for checking out another video. Today we are doing FM synthesis on the MC-101. Now, FM synthesis, super cool. Been around since the 80s, 70s maybe? I don't know. It's been around for quite a while. Basically, the principle is you take one wave as it is traveling, you change its frequency based on the position of another wave. Traditionally with sine waves, a lot of times with other waves, especially these days. Um, and you can make all sorts of crazy sounds with them, uh, as seen lately in the beautiful electron devices, the model cycles, the digitone, and most recently the Syntact. If you're a synth dork like me, you probably have been looking at those devices. And I'm here to tell you, if you have an MC-101, you actually might not need to buy those for some of the FM awesomeness. So, uh, with that said, today, obviously, I'm super excited. I'm excited for two reasons. One is, I have a brand new sound pack. It does FM synthesis. I'm super, super, super excited to show that to everybody. Two is, I just put out a new song. It's the first song I've put out in a really long time. It's probably the best song I've ever been a part of. I absolutely love it. It would mean the world to me if you check it out. Um, I did it with Mad Happy, and it was mastered by this guy named Rory Hinkle. Absolute genius. I just, I can't tell you how excited I am about the song. So if you really like this pack, this pack you can get for free. There's a Facebook group. Um, it's called MC101, MC707 Project Sharing, I think. I will link it in the description. It's free there. Just search my name and you'll find it. You can also go to my Patreon page if you don't have a Facebook just, uh, I'll link that in the description too. Uh, it's like a dollar a month. You can subscribe and then cancel right away. I don't care. I just want people to have the pack and Patreon's a really convenient way for me to host it. Uh, third, if neither of those work, just shoot me an email, bencomusic at gmail.com. Be like, hey man, want the pack. If you also want me to send you the analog pack, which is the last video about this sort of thing I made, which I'll also link in the description, just say, I also want the analog pack. Um, and I'll send you both. Um, but yeah, if you like it and you really want to support me, just check out that song. I'm super excited. It's called Losing My Head, Ben Co. Remix. It's fantastic. I'm so in love with it. Okay, I think that's everything I have to say. Um, also, obviously, thank you to my patrons. Uh, currently, you guys are the best, and between Patreon and the, the you folks watching on YouTube, I can afford my monthly Xenology Pro subscription so I can make packs like this. Um, so thank you all so very much. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's everything I've got, intro-wise. Uh, I know I'm talking a little bit quick. I'm just really excited to get into this pack. <laughs> so, um, without further ado, let's, uh, let's talk about it. So, FM synthesis, like I said, you're taking one wave and you're modulating it with another wave. As the second wave, the modulating wave goes to the top, you're increasing the frequency of the carrying wave, or... Yeah, the carrier wave and uh, vice versa, and it makes really cool sounds from twinkly bell tones that we think of from like the 80s and 90s, all the way up to like really ridiculous, like screeching, scratchy basses, like metal sawing types of sounds that you might be more familiar with, with more modern genres like hyper pop and like industrial stuff. So it's very versatile synthesis. Most FM synth engines have a lot, a lot, a lot of parameters. Uh, like the DX7, notoriously a pain in the butt to program. Um, more commonly, uh, FL Studio has Citrus, which is the first synth I really learned how to do synthesis on. Um, but in in modern times, Electron has, and, and Korg 2 put out an, the Op6, which is an FM synth that tries to make it more accessible. And Electron did this thing, especially uh, with the model cycles from a couple years ago, which is sort of a competitor to the MC-101. But they put on... They took the complicated parts of FM synthesis, made it simpler, and put it into these things called machines. Um, and those machines are, they each give you a few parameters, uh, but one will sound like a kick drum, and it'll give you a lot of different parameters to shape a kick drum. Another sounds like a snare, gives you a lot of parameters to shape a snare, and so on and so forth. So, when I saw that, that sort of gave me the idea that maybe it was possible to do something similar on the MC-101. Now, Xenology Pro is, is fa that's, that's, that's what you see on my computer back there. Xenology Pro is super, super, super powerful software. It's not the best documented, in my experience. So it's taken quite a bit of trial and error to get here, but I'm actually quite happy with the results. So with that said, uh, if you want to get the pack, 
You download it, you put it in the sounds folder on the MC-101, and as long as you're on version 1.6 or later, um, you will be able to do exactly what I'm doing here. Though I would recommend, I'm on version 1.72, I believe. If you are not on that, I would recommend updating to that. And then everything that I do here should work the same for you. So, now we've done that, now we can get into making some sounds. So, let's just set up this project that I wanna do. I'm gonna to come to track four. I'm gonna hold shift and project to delete it because on my init project, uh, track four is a tone track by default. I want to make it a looper track and we're gonna talk about what I'm gonna do with that in a little bit. But now I have track one is a drum track with the initial kit. Track two is, and three are both tone tracks. That's just how I have my thing set up. Now there's one more thing that we're gonna do, and that is there's two modes that these knobs can be in, these control knobs. They can either, uh, all four of them control one track, or they can control different tracks based on, they can each like, knob one controls this parameter on track one, knob two controls this parameter on track two, and you can change your parameters that way. We want it to be in the mode where all of them control one track. Uh, so to do that, you can tell by which, if one of these lights is lit up, you're controlling all four tracks at the same time. If all four lights are lit up, then you're all, each one, every knob is controlling the current track that you have selected. And that's what we want. So just press all four buttons at the same time. That switches between the two modes. You can see it says knob track multi, knob track single. Uh, we want knob track multi, which means all the knobs control one track. So we're going to do that. So now all, hopefully all four of your lights are lit up. And now, I know there's a lot of setup, but I promise it'll be worth it. Uh, now we're going to take on track two, I have selected. Now I'm going to hold this button down and I'm going to change the knob assigned to system control one. And then I'm going to hold down filter and I'm going to change it to system control two. And then we're going to come to this next button and hit system control three and hold it down and twist it till it says system control four. Now, the system control parameters are, they're like macro knobs in other synths that you see, uh, but accessible from the MC-101 and in Xenology Pro on the computer, you can assign them to whatever you want within some limits. So... I have set up this sound pack to work with this setup. You can you can set them to decay or cut off or whatever, um, but for right now, this is uh, this is a good way to get going with the sound design stuff that I put in here. So, yeah, all we're gonna do now is we're gonna click this button. We're gonna shift over here to sound file. We're going to, it's the first one here. It's called BC, that stands for Benco, that's me. FM, which stands for Frequency Modulation Synthesis. And it says there's eight there. So there's eight different tones in this sound pack. Now, each tone I treat a lot like a machine in the electron FM synthesis arena, right? So this one's called FM Kick. There's FM Snare, FM Hat, FM Clap. FM Tone, FM Clank, that's my favorite one. We're we'll get to it. We're gonna go through all of these. Uh, FM Sweep Up and FM Sweep Down. Now, if you go to my Patreon, I'll try to put it on the Facebook too. I'll try to find a decent way that I can get this to you. I have a, a cheat sheet here that I've printed out so that for me to go through that tells you what each one will do. Um, in fact, if I just hold that up to it, Oh, it's backwards. Well, if you're clever, um, you just screen cap that, flip it around, hopefully, uh, and be on your way if there's no other way for me to get it to you, but I'll do my best to get it to you um, in some useful way. Uh, so, all right, so that said, now we are just going to go through it. I'm gonna make a little track that hopefully you heard at the beginning um, with, with some FM synthesis on the MC-101. So, Let's get started. We're going to start with a kick. So I'm going to click kick, and now I'm going to hit the pad. All right. I'm going to turn up my monitor just a Oh, you know what? Maybe I don't need to. No, yeah, okay. We're good. 
So I'm going to turn all these knobs all the way to the left and it's going to be low. My headphones don't have like the greatest bass response. They're, they're okay. It's not a great bass response, but this, if you have big headphones and if YouTube doesn't ruin it with the compression, this probably sounds like a low sine wave. Um, so now uh, we're going to look at the, what, what do the knobs do? So system control one on the kick is cross mod amount. So Roland has this thing called cross modulation, which sometimes is like FM modulation and sometimes is not like FM modulation, depending on what era of Roland you're in. In Xenology Pro, cross mod two, X mod two is very similar to FM synthesis. I won't get into the super technical bits because I don't completely understand them. Like I said, it's not documented super good, but it sounds a lot like FM synthesis to me at least. So, that's what we're going with. So, so this knob is going to control how much FM synthesis you have going on. And you can hear as we turn this up, we have a lot more higher frequency content coming into the sound. Next knob is going to be the frequency of the second oscillator, the modulating wave, right? So, if I turn this knob, the if I turn the first knob up a lot and turn this knob, we can see that changes the tone quite a bit. And it gives it that if the around 25% gives it some real nice like clicky clickiness at the beginning. You know what? This also I think controls some of the filter or not the filter, the envelope of the pitch of the second oscillator, which is why you get that clickiness at the beginning. I'll have to check that before I print this for you guys. Um, so yeah, it gives it that clickiness at the beginning and up top gives you some nice zappy sounds if you're into that. Um, but then uh, system control three is gonna bring in a triangle oscillator that's also being frequency modulated. So you can hear that sort of distorted sounding kick um, as you bring that in and mix that in. That sounds real nice in my opinion. And then the last knob, this is a knob. This is actually the fourth knob on all of the engines except the snare. This is called fat, which takes, uh, maybe I'll put a little animation, but in Xenology Pro, it takes your nice wave and it just like crushes it. And it makes really awesome harmonics, especially with the frequency modulated stuff. So a lot of it, if you just want it to get like thicker, just turn this knob and it'll, it'll get, it's, it sounds a lot like a, a distortion kind of getting added to it. Um, I think it sounds really nice for a lot of things. So, I mean, that's the kick drum and this can take you a lot of places. Obviously you can like, you can uh, change your octave. You can make yourself nice little like stuff like that. Um, for the most part, everything is designed, at least in my head, to work around like like this, I guess, middle C-ish, where neither of your octave buttons are lit up, and you hit the C. That's where I did the sound design on the computer. But, you know, play around with it. That's what it's for. Uh, I think a really nice, like, basic kick drum is you put everything facing that way. And that works a lot of things. And at, basically, for the kick drum, as you turn stuff up, it starts to get a little bit more intense, distorted exciting, you know? And you can get real crazy, like nice, like kick and bass stuff like that. So I think that's pretty rad. I am just going, I'm going to make a little two bar sequence here. I like the sound of this. We're going to go like this. Um, I did this last night. I had like a plan. I'm just typing into the sequencer right now. Um, you can do this with an external controller too. Right now we're just focusing on the MC-101. Um, and it works works just fine. You could also just play it in live if you wanted to. I'm not going to risk that at this moment. What does it sound like? Let's see. What do we got? No, I don't like that note. How about that? Yeah, okay, that's cool, that's cool. We're gonna have a snare there, that's, you know, that's my plan anyway. Uh, I don't want that one there, that's fine though. Okay, so this is the kick drum. Now, uh, since it is sort of a 
synth, we can we can mess with it now, right? As as it's playing. Again, my headphones are not really made for making a kick drum, honestly. Um, but that's okay. So now I'm now I'm gonna hit record and I'm just gonna give like a little accent on like one or two of the notes so just so we can hear it. I'm gonna go like this. There we go. It's got a little little movement to it, a little flavor. So now we're gonna move on to the snare track. Uh, one more time, we're gonna hold this button down, change it to system control one, hold this down, change it to two, this knob, hold it down, change it to three, this knob, hold it down, change it to four, beautiful. Now we're gonna go to, we're gonna click this, we're gonna go to sound file, BCFM, snare. All right, so the snare. So now knob one, the same gonna be X mod amount. How much the second oscillator is impacting the first oscillator. Uh, the second knob is gonna be uh, how much of that pitch dive in the second operator that you have. Um, so if we go like this, it helps give it that clickiness at the beginning of the sound, which we're literally looking for. System control three going to bring in your FM noise. So the architecture of the Xenology Pro is that there's four operators, oscillators, partials is what they call them here. Um, so one and two, uh, operator two or partial two can modulate partial one and partial four can modulate partial three. So a lot of these, I have one FM synth, like two operator FM synth on partials one and two, and a second one on partial three and four to make these sort of drum sounds. So this here with the snare, Really, the first two knobs are uh, controlling both the how much X mod is on both of them and uh, the pitch slew on both of them, but they're set up in different ways so that the operator three and four give you a much like longer noise tail like you might expect in a snare. So uh, knob three here is bringing in that noise. to get that nice snare sound. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Now again, uh, operator four on this is actually XFM, which I felt added a nicer tonality than the fat parameter. So XFM is Roland's own thing, where it will bring in a extra square wave that you can't access anywhere else. That square wave is then modulated with whatever operator you send it to. In this case, I think it's sent to all four operators, but again, it's going to give this some crunch. You can hear it doing some stuff there. I really like the way this sounds. I think that sounds pretty cool. One other thing I will tell you about the snare. Most of these don't have any MFX on them, uh, but the snare does the snare does have a the transient processor on it. You can manipulate that if you want. Um, if you turn it off, I think it sounds a lot better with it on. Very nice, very snappy. So I'm going to double the length of this, and we have our kick pattern. And I'm just going to... I'm just going to play these in here. I'm going to put two more here, and I'm just going to lower the velocity a little bit on those. All right, cool. And again, now we can mess with stuff. I think that sounds cool. And then we want to change something on the, those last two snares. That sounded kind of cool. Let's get where we want it again. I'm just gonna hit record. Nice. All right, so now we got our kick and our snare. 
and now we are gonna resample them because I like how those sound. I'm gonna resample them so I can bring them in on a drum track uh, and then we can continue on in this sort of fashion. So now I'm gonna go to track four. I'm gonna lower the volume of track three because I only wanna record the kick. I'm gonna pick a new clip. I'm gonna hit record. Then I'm gonna hit play and I think this will work. Okay, ah, I didn't set record length. How do we do that? We're gonna go here, pretty sure. Yeah, so we hit shift and record, scroll over, record measure. I only want it to go for two measures, don't need to take any extra time. It's gonna select an empty clip. We're gonna hit record, hit play. It turns red, that's how we know it's recording. Now it's done, clip, and if I turn the kick track down, Great, it's recorded. I'm gonna pick a new clip on clip four. We're gonna raise the snare volume. I'm gonna hit record again. Oh, the other important parameter to set there, I should mention is uh, record source mix out. You can change it just to the track. Depends on what you want. I often like to use the master effects when I'm recording these things, but I don't wanna do that for this because I just wanna you know get through these machines. So that's all. Uh, that's why I lowered the volume. So now, uh, if we play with a kick with the track four snare, lovely, we can flip it around, play the recorded kick with the snare. Great. All right. Now we can come back to, actually going to put track four. We're going to go like that, just like I had it. And then we're going to come to track two where you're going to delete the sequence, which is uh, shift project and seek, we'll delete the sequence. Um, it's okay, we already recorded it. So now I'm gonna come, I'm gonna hit exit or go to note mode and I'm gonna click this knob, sound file, BCFM, hat. All right, now we got our hat, nice. So knob number one is the decay for the transient part of the hi-hat, the first snap. So here, very short, turn this up. I really like the sound of this. I'm really proud of this hi-hat. I think that sounds real nice. But you can make that long as you want. Very cool. If you want more open sound, you can actually raise the attack just a tiny bit. We're gonna leave it here for now. This knob number two is gonna change the frequency of the modulating wave, uh, which will does nice things to the sound of the hi-hat. Nice variety of hi-hat tones you can get there without even pitching it up, but you can obviously. Wonder if you go. That's kind of a cool effect. Never done that before. Never seen anyone do it before. Maybe that's not new, but if you go down note wise with the hi-hat while you go up with the second operator frequency, it sounds like it's not changing that much, but the timbre is changing quite a bit. It's kind of neat. I don't know, just thought I just had this very moment. <laughs> uh, again, uh, knob number three is gonna bring up a noise envelope. So you're gonna have more of that. That's obviously FM noise uh, that I just thought sounded pretty nice there. So yeah, so this is gonna change the decay length of that noise. like that and then uh, once again four is going to bring in that fat that nice bit of distortion sounding crunching the waveform love how it sounds now i bought the one-on-one because i don't like i'm not that good at sound design just so you guys know i bought it because i wanted to use presets that someone better than me had made so if these don't sound good you can probably do better i'm just putting that out there but uh, let's, um, I just shortened the length so there's less to type in, but we're gonna go, we're gonna put a hi-hat here, hi-hat here, hi-hat here, hi-hat here. Then I'm gonna double it. Now I have two bars of hi-hats doubling it. You just hold sequence and hit the, the measure button. Left or right, we'll double or have it. Um, and then I'm gonna put another hi-hat here, another one here, another one here. 
There we go. Great. Now we can, again. Let's see. What do I want? There we go. I like that. Cool. I'm going to hit record. Nice. All right. So we're going to go now to track four. We're going to hit this button. We're going to hit record. We're only want to record this one and we're going to hit play. Awesome. All righty. Now we're going to come back to track two. We are going to, what do we have left? Ooh, the clap. Ooh, the clap's going to be fun. All right. Um, this, I don't think they had this on the electron model cycles. It wasn't in my original plan for this, but I saw it on the Electron Syntax, and I was like, I wonder if first if uh, Xenology could do it. So yeah, let's we're gonna I'll show you. I think it can. So let's go to track three, which right now is the snare. We're gonna hit shift project sequence to clear it. I'm gonna click here, sound file, BCFM, clap. Nice. Okay. Now clap. Well, that doesn't sound good at all. Okay. Uh, the first knob is the amplitude decay. Uh, so it will make it like ring out longer. There's, there's two distinct hits on it, which I think make it sound nice as a clap. And this makes them longer. You can make them real short. Kind of long. Cool. That's the first knob. Second knob is the decay envelope of the frequency of the modulating operator. So they're gonna, that's gonna change sort of the pitch that you're hearing of the modulating one. That's really gonna change the timber of it, timbre, from sort of dark clap down here to like more, much brighter, like, I don't know. It, it sounds to me like it's very like metallic clap, which I, I like quite a bit for this sort of thing. Uh, so that's that second knob. The third knob is go. Oh, sorry. Now I'm going to have to check that one too. I think what I said is correct. The third knob is going to change the frequency. You can hear that better when there's a longer envelope. It, that changes the frequency of the modulating operators on both the first and second clap. So again, another timbre control for that. And then uh, four, one more time is fat. Add some of that nice like distortion. Obviously you can put reverb, you can mess with the attack, the decay, the release on all of these. You can mess with the filter. You can have a lot of fun messing with the filter in conjunction with this stuff. Uh, I'm just showing you sort of the basics, the bare bones oscillator stuff. You still have all the magic of the effects of the MC-101 built into it. So that's our clap. Let me just record a quick little clap pattern. Let me, I can put it, we can put it on the snare, I think. But we want like a, like something here. Let's do that, and then, I don't know, one more here, maybe. I'm going to lower the velocity on this guy a bit. It's kind of neat, but I don't want it that much. And then this one I'm going to lower, I don't know. Just do, do what you want to do, you know? So let's, uh, but if we're playing it. You could automate this too. You can use the motion control on here to do this uh, instead of just dialing it in like I am, but whatever you want to do. Just kind of want this to be kind of dirty so that it really like 
grabs you, especially because I'm hopefully going to use this jam in the intro if it comes out okay. So let's see. Okay. All right, now we're going to go one more time to track four. We're going to click a new clip. We're going to hit record. We are going to lower the volume of the stuff we don't want to record. We're going to hit go. Great, okay. Now we have four clips here. We're gonna click here. We're gonna hit shift sound export clip. We're gonna note that that's called export 00031. That's important to remember. Uh, we're gonna click here. We're gonna hit sound export clip, export 32. Beautiful, hit three, sound export clip, export 33. Yeah, that's right, I think that's right. See, I don't remember. Hit shift, export clip, export 34. Great. All right, now we're gonna come back here. We're actually gonna, yeah, we're gonna come back to track one. We're gonna take away all these sounds. We're gonna hit shift, this pad. We are going to wave file, export folder. This won't work if you're not on version 1.7, I believe, just so you know. Uh, what do we say? 31 was the first one. That sounds like our kick. We're going to come pad two, hit shift, wave file, export, export 32. That's our snare. We're going to hit shift on here, wave file, export, export 33. Beautiful. Four, wave file, export, export 34. There's our clap. Okay, great. Now we're going to hit shift and the first pad again. We are going to come to pad edit. We're going to change this so that it says decay offset and release offset up to 100. We'll click the next pad, 100, next pad, 100, next pad. This is going to sound funny. Sorry about that. Now we're going to go do decay. And was that a little tiny bit of a pain? Yes, it was, but that's okay. We're gonna be fine. I'm gonna double the length of this because I know that they're two bars long. And I am just gonna use my control knob here to highlight pad one. We're gonna put it one step at the beginning, highlight pad two, one step at the beginning, three and four. And now all I have to do is play track one and I should get that whole drum beat that we just made with real FM synthesis sounds. Not bad. Not bad at all, in my opinion. Now, we're gonna come to track four. We're gonna hit shift project delete track four. And we're gonna make a tone track. Uh, I wanna give a quick shout out to, I think T Break Beats has some good videos about using the looper track just like that to maximize the number of tracks that we have in here. Uh, so, yeah, that's great. Okay, let's go to, we have our beat. Now we just get to have some fun. If you have long samples playing, you can hold shift and hit play while your track is stopped and it will end those samples. So like if I, I start it now, right? And I'm gonna, I don't want it to keep playing. So I'm gonna hold shift and hit the play button. That will stop everything immediately. Important to know. All right, so track two, we are going to click here. Sound file, BCFM. We're gonna go to tone. I really like the sound of the tone engine, whatever, machine, whatever you want to call it. Um, knob number one. Give me one second. All right, no sweat. I just get paranoid sometimes that the iPhone stops recording and I don't know about it, so I just wanted to check quick. All right, but anyway, uh, FM tone. Everything down at the bottom. We get a nice, pretty sine wave. Beautiful. And it's polyphonic. I didn't make a chord engine because the MC-101 can play chords. That's all. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so without anything, beautiful sine wave. First knob is the amount of the modulation. Why does that change it so much? I'm not going to talk about it. It's kind of complicated. But right around uh, noon, 12 o'clock, uh, it sounds like pretty traditional FM to me. Uh, if you go further, it starts to get rougher. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but we do there, and then uh, this knob is going to change the frequency 
of the modulating wave. Again. So that sweep sound probably sounds super familiar to you if you're like an FM synth kind of person. But I really like for this sort of thing, just using the first two knobs, this gives you a really nice like twinkly. Like toy piano types of sounds. Really reminiscent of like the Casios from my childhood. I really like the sound of that. And again, you can change the timbre with this. And then honestly, a little bit of reverb and delay, even. Uh, let me, yeah, let me, let's just, let's just do it real quick. Uh, I'm going to put on, there's no MFX on this, so if you felt like putting some on, you could. But if I put on a little delay, a little bit of reverb, quite a bit. That's a fairly convincing FM bell type of sound. And I really like that. I'm going to turn this off for just a moment so we don't interfere with what we're doing. But I think that's really cool out of the tone thing. And again, polyphony. All right. So my phone just stopped recording. I uh, ran out of space. Um, so if there's any continuity issues, I apologize for that. I'm going to do my best to keep us in the same spot as I was before. Let me just delete the stuff that I had here and uh, we'll talk about it again. No problem. So, I believe I had just finished talking about how uh, this makes a nice bell sort of timbre here. Um, but I actually, I really like this as like a bass synth. Oh, no, we haven't talked about ba, 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 the next two. Well, okay, it's about using it as a bass synth. So, uh, this, the fourth knob again is our fat parameter. It squishes up the waveform. Can make some crazy stuff if we go down a little bit. This up. I love how that sounds. Knob number three brings in a sub oscillator triangle wave, which might be a little bit hard to hear depending on your speaker setup, but it helps keep the fundamental in line, right? Sorry, my hair got messed up during the uh, the intermission. All right, just wanted to get the hair right for continuity's sake. So anyway. We're here, um, we've got our fat parameter up, we're down an octave, we got this knob turned up. And knob number three is gonna bring in that sub oscillator to sort of keep us a little bit more centered as a bass, a little grounding. So I just wanna record a little thing. Now it's really like confuses like a synth while the sequence is going. Listen for like sweet spots and all those knobs. Got like some minor sounding intervals there. So now, uh, track three is FM Clank. Really, really, really like this synth. Uh, we're gonna turn everything off first. Sounds like a sine wave. Little bit dirty. This is very similar to the tone, um, except that I changed stuff so it has more of a, like a stronger decay envelope and uh, a little bit more like metallic kind of sounds. So first one, X mod amount. Already kind of aggressive. Now number two, it's the frequency of the modulating wave. We want to sound nice and dirty and metallic. 
Uh, knob number three is going to blend between operators one and two and operators three and four. Um, and operators three and four are very, very noisy. Uh, here, all the way over here is just three and four. And that's still, uh, that frequency is impacted by knobs one and two. And then, uh, but if we turn this all the way up, and then we can... I like up high. Nice, like it, it, it sounds a little bit like you're, you're tapping on metal. Love it for that, especially like lead type of sounds. Um, and then knob number four is fat again. You know, I, I really like how it sounds. I'm just gonna go to setting. I'm gonna give it a little bit of delay. Cool, it has some reverb on it already. Sorry, I didn't tell you that. Without reverb. Uh, I do, I want the reverb on a little bit though. And then I was gonna give it a little bit of release if I didn't already. Love the way that sounds. Uh, so now. Don't be afraid to go high with it. So I'm just gonna hit record. Gonna record a little bit of uh, motion to it. I'm gonna just give it a little bit of something at the beginning. and random but that's okay uh so that's tone and clank love those I think there's a lot of flexibility let's actually go back to tone i want to just record a little modulation maybe i like that okay let's hit record The last two, FM Sweep Down and FM Sweep Up, are very, very, very similar. Um, they both have the fundamental sitting at one note, and the second, the, the modulator either sweeping up to meet it or down to meet it, um, and it gives a nice transition sort of effect. I think it sounds really neat, that's why I put them in here. Um, and yeah, let me just show you how they work. Turn them all the way down. Which one is this? This is sweep down, so we're gonna go down a little bit because we're gonna start high, sweep down low. You're gonna get just a sine wave. First knob, X mod amount. Uh, third knob is gonna be where you're starting. So all the way to the left will be starting at the frequency that you're at. The higher you go, it will go higher to sweep down lower. And then knob number two is how long it takes to sweep. So I'm just gonna turn this up a little bit we hear it comes down. I have some delay on this uh, from what I was doing at the end of the video last time. So I think it sounds great, but we're gonna turn it off for the moment. So you can hear it sweep. You can hear it take longer to sweep. And you can hear it sweep from farther away. And this one gets real spacey sounding. And then of course, now number four is going to be that fat parameter, and that gets really crazy here. Gets real spacey, lasery, staticky. Love it. Uh, so now, yeah, let me just throw on some reverb, 
and delay, you'll hear it. Love how this sounds, ready? Very sci-fi, really like this sound. Um, I'm just gonna change it now one more time to sweep up. This is exactly the same principle. The only thing is you're starting low and you're sweeping up high. Uh, you still have fat over here. You still have X amount amount. It's time to sweep. The only difference now is if you go all the way to the right with knob number three, now you're all the way at the top. So you don't hear any movement. As you go down, you're lowering. It sounds really cool. I love it it's like an, as an intro. Uh, you're lowering where you're modulator frequency start and then it's coming up so you can go really low let's go up high to start it gets real silly down at the bottom uh and again the fat parameter especially where it's silly down there come on that's incredible all right so uh let's do Change this back to sweep down. And that's it. Uh, yeah. You can go crazy with it. You're still on the MC-101. <laughs> FM synthesis, man. So yeah, I mean, that's what I got. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm really excited about it. Um, if you want to try it for yourself, you can download it either on the Facebook page or my Patreon, which I'll link in the description below. You can also just shoot me an email, music at gmail.com. Um, I'll just send it to you. Uh, that's all. If you make anything with it, tag me. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Banco Music. Hit me up. I'd uh, love to see what people are doing. I just want people to be able to use this, use the MC-101 to their full potential. Um, big thank you uh, to my patrons. You all make it possible for me to pay the my Xenology every month, and you just watch it on YouTube. Uh, so thank you so much for that, everybody. But if you really want to support me, if you're like, wow, Ben, this is a great contribution to the community, let me know how to support you. Just check out my song. I'm so excited about my song. Um, Losing My Head by Mad Happy, Ben Co. Remix. I'll link it in the description, like everything else. Uh, give it a give it a listen. Um, Matt Happy and Rory Hinkle did amazing work on it. Again, I can't say enough positive things about it. I'm just so excited. And uh, that's it. Thanks so much for listening. Check it out. Let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks so much, everybody.